it down on the podium and it squished and it was wet and it I can still hear the noise of of that very vulnerable organ um, being set down onto the podium and I was just hooked. And I just knew um, the first time I worked with a client that I was interested in um, pursuing this this path. My current interests um, focus are on stroke rehabilitation. So um, individuals who have survived a stroke often have difficulty with speaking, listening to spoken language, reading, and writing, and that's a disorder called aphasia. When a stroke occurs, um, it, a stroke can occur anywhere in the brain. Um, the stroke survivors that I work with have all had their stroke in their left hemisphere. So language, the language centers reside in the, primarily in the left hemisphere of the brain. So you see the center of the brain, the, the middle. Um, what we're interested in studying is the left hemisphere of the brain um, where we have our speech centers. Speech and language come so naturally to us. We don't even think about what we're doing when we're talking. Um, and now every moment they're thinking about how to produce language, how to produce those ideas that they have in their heads that are still there. Um, all their thoughts, their, their self is still inside, um, but they're struggling to communicate that. Okay, you ready? Yep. A participant in this research will try to name a picture and then that picture goes away. And we all have those moments, the kind of tip of the tongue moments where we can't think of the word that we're trying to retrieve. Um, these folks who have aphasia have that happen, you know, every other word or sometimes every word is that feeling. Hanger. At no point am I bored with my profession. At no point um, am I, do I regret the decision that I took to, to be in this field because my connections are amazing. And to see their successes, something as small as putting two words together is a huge success. The science of what we know is understanding how the brain works, how the brain takes these abstract ideas that are in our head um, and kind of translates them into a code that is then sent out through our muscles. It's a really complex process and so uh, we spend a lot of our time understanding neurobiology and neuroscience and neurophysiology um, so that we can better understand how the the stuff that we see on the outside, the behavior, um, happens. So instead of counting things like molecules and atoms like some other scientists do, we count human behaviors. Clinicians, practitioners, are primarily women. But then again, just like with getting people to move on for the PhD, the, the people who decide to go on for their doctoral degree to become research scientists, are primarily men. And so we have this huge gap, again, um, in trying to translate um, the clinical practitioner to a research scientist, and even more so for those um, that are female. 50% of the positions available for, for people who want to go study speech and hearing sciences to get their doctoral degree are unfilled. So how do we get people to, to go on to, to want to do this, to do more of the science, to do more of the research? You know, why would you want to go on to, to a PhD? Because you love this. I mean, because you love answering questions. You're curious about human behavior. You're curious about how to, um, how to help not just the individual, but the whole population of people who are stroke survivors or children with autism or um, uh, individuals with Parkinson's disease. You want to help that whole population. The night hike under the moonlight, the city sparkling. I really can't feel my toes, at least I'm not stumbling. Okay, well, not as much as you. 
Did you know that if you clap your hands, Bigfoot might come back? Oh, the more the merrier I say that we could have our cocoa at the top.